Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Seas of Thunder Global Naval Warfare from 1939 to 1945. Hey, that corresponds with World War II. This is a game designed by GMT Games. It's by Jeff Horger, Charles Maher, and Neil Sibolsky. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Jeff Horger, I know, because he designed one of the best racing games there is, and that is Thunder Alley and Grand Prix and uh, Apocalypse Road. So he's now doing full-fledged war games, unless this is a ship racing game. That might be cool. Why don't we open it up, see what you get inside. All right. Let's dig in. I like the I like the artwork on the front. I like the blue too. It really it just says, hey, this is a naval warfare game. Alright. So we start off with the rulebook version 1.0 GMT. It's on there. Excellent. Thank you, GMT. Matt finish uh, rulebook paper. Back to their good stuff. It's 36 pages. It is you know, as usual, it's full color. Kind of dense, kind of kind of small print. I mean, not not microscopic tax form kind of print, but it starts off as usual, explaining the components, the you know the pieces, what's on the pieces, etc. 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 The port mats. So we're gonna have port mats. Pretty interesting. I assume those are coming up here. How to set up combat mats. Control of sea zone. So there's a lot of text. I'm seeing a few graphics. I mean, of course, this, the uh, rule books are downloadable on the GMT website, playbooks are not. However, in this case, we have 10 pages of rules, and then we get right to the scenarios. So we have scenario one, Raider Warfare. Got scenario two. So we got two, got three, four, Red Sun Rising, five, Shattered Sword. Six, Neptune's Inferno, Scenario 7, Red Sun Setting. Uh-oh, something happened to the Red Sun. What could it have been? And Scenario 8, World War II at Sea, the campaign game. So play all this and then boom, there you go. And then we have, starting on page 25, we have examples of play. So it's not really, even though it's kind of dense and there's not a lot of graphics there uh, in the rules, there is very short rules, only about 10 pages, and then about 15, 14 pages of scenarios. And then we've got examples of play, which is probably gonna give us a lot more. Yeah, here's some more detailed graphics of how things are going to work. And then that's a few pages, and then we got designer notes from 30 to 36. So notes on each scenario. And it's like a scoring chart. Hmm, interesting. Let's just see what we get going on here. So that's a rule book. Then we've got our mats here. This is the combat sequence mat I'm mentioning in the rules. So this is a uh, GMT cardstock, kind of a matte cardstock finish, fold out. And it shows you the process, air superiority, air strikes, anti-submarine warfare, raider submarine attacks, mine warfare, all classes, surface combat order. There's your little mat to deal with this. And then we have also the another combat sequence map. So you see our multiple combats going on at the same time. And then we have the port mats. And these are, you see, appear to be by scenario. So here's the allied port map for scenario one. Again, the, the matte finish coated cardstock, very durable and folds out uh you know double width of eight and a half by eleven so what about that 17 by 11. so this is the allied port map for scenario one where your different locations are and what ships you have there and then you flip it over and this one is actually scenario four for the allies so the ally have their stack of port mats and they use it for whatever scenarios we played so there's allies for port two or for scenario two excuse me so the ports and then for scenario five, again, and then this is the one for scenario three. 
now is in scenario six. Wow, that's a big one. All right, and then the axis, of course, is going to have their share. So there's axis format for scenario one. I'm going to go on a limb and say scenario four. No, scenario seven. No, wait a minute. What, what's going on? I'm confused. This is the axis port map for scenario one. Now we've got the allied port map for scenario seven. All right. Axis port map for scenario two. And I'm going to guess what's on the other side. Axis port map for scenario five. There we go. Axis port map scenario three. And access port map for scenario six. All right, so this is going to be four and seven, I would guess, for the axis because the allies already had a seven. So access port map for scenario four. Sevastopol, the Black Sea, and then scenario seven for the axis. So you're going to have whatever the board size is, plus each side is going to have one of these double double width mats set out as well. And now we've got counters. Counters, counters, counters. These are half inch counters. These are tiny counters. Looks like they're all half inch counters and there are five sheets of them. Five sheets of counters and lots, lots of detail. They all have names on them, classes, etc., etc., etc. So there's, we'll go through each one. You can look at them here. There's a lot of counters. So this is USA in blue. And you can tell because it says USA on the back. So it's counter sheet one, counter sheet two. So we got USA. We've got Italy. We've got Greece. We got Russia. This is the world at war. We've got some convoy markers for the various factions. And game turn trackers, we got some looks look like mines there. We got Swedish fleets. Ooh, put stuff all over the board here. Sheet number three Japan is in yellow, the UK is in a light brown, Peru, There's a couple of ships involved. Counter sheet four, even more UK, Netherlands, Finland. Norway, Finland, Finland, Finland. And then here we go, we got Germany. They had to come to the party. Germany, France, Brazil, Romania, Turkey, Argentina. Nobody's left out here. Uh, Spain and Chile. Wow. A lot of small ship counters and you know, obviously, like I said, we've got some convoy counters in there too. And then we've got a, our map. It's a full eight panel map. And it's got the whole, whole world there. We can show it all to you here. So you got the early war, you got your reinforcement track here, available. It'll be a land-based assistance, I would assume that is. So if you'll notice here, what's interesting is the land has no spaces. This is a naval warfare game, so you're occupying these naval spaces with your ships. So when you see this, used land-based assistance, available land-based assistance is here, and I can send them out and do some reinforcements. Get your map key, any aircraft die rolls, allied repair track, so you can, again, Similar to other games where uh, repairs starting the queue. Let me bring that up here with the repair track, sorry. Where repairs start in the queue and they work their way forward and then they're available to come back into play. Place at any port space of the matching nation that shares the unit's large national flag. So this is pretty massive scale without being a massive game. So I've got Pearl Harbor here, the Hawaiian Islands, you got these sectors, you're working your way over to them. Assume these are control points initially. Bases, Darara.
And then we got a big old thing of red dice. I feel like Risk. Just a bunch of red dice. There's a nice GMT. GMT makes really good dice. I and mean, they have a nice big size and everything. So we have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 dice. And we're going to roll them, and I bet a red one wins. And a red one did win. That lone six won everything. Beat them all. Just knock them all out. So anyway, if you pick up a copy of Seas of Thunder, Global Naval Warfare 1939-1945 from GMT Games, you are going to get those 12 red dice. You're going to get that beautiful large 8-panel uh, map, mounted map board. You're going to get six sheets of half-inch non-pre-rounded counters. You're going to have to probably take these out and round them with a Oregon Laminations 2.5mm Deluxe Corner Rounder, the only tool for the job. And you are going to get the uh, port mat. So for, there's seven for each faction. So you're going to have, uh, you know, flip them over and use the right side. So there's seven scenarios. So there's seven port mats for each side, double sided and double width. You're going to get the combat mats for resolving combat. There's two of those combat sequence mats. And you're going to get that very simple, uh, let's see, 20, 36 page rule book, 10 pages are mostly rules, and then the rest are these scenarios. And that is everything in Seas of Thunder, designed by Jeff Horger, Charles Maher, and Neil Sabulski from GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!